Welcome to Circuit Secrets. In this video, we will examine the schematic for the Circuit Secrets PA1. For this video, I am using an MXL 2001 condenser microphone. I'm still using the PA1 DIY tube preamp. On the schematic, the first symbol we come to on the left hand side is the input jack. This is a standard quarter inch input jack. R1 is the grid leak resistor. A grid leak resistor is important only if the stage is capacitively coupled. Without a path to ground, the grid will saturate and the amp will not pass a signal. This is also necessary with op amps that are capacitively coupled, as a charge builds up and the amp will stop passing signal. If an inductive coil is the input, such as a dynamic mic or electric guitar pickup, the resistor is redundant, as the coil provides a discharge path to ground. I consider 1 meg to be the perfect value for a grid leak resistor, as it is essentially transparent and has little effect on the sound. The grid leak resistor also acts to reference the grid to the ground, so the grid can appear more negative than the cathode, which has a slight positive bias voltage. R2 is the grid stopper resistor. This resistor acts as a filter to prevent high frequency RF signal from reaching the tube. If you are hearing radio signals from your preamp, a higher resistance value grid stopper may help. This resistor will attenuate some signal and cut some high frequencies, so it is best to use as low a value as possible in your situation. Depending on tube characteristics, this may also affect parasitic oscillations, which present as motor boating or excessive current consumption at idle. R3 is the cathode resistor. This resistor separates the cathode from ground and allows the cathode to develop a slightly positive charge in relation to the ground. In the old days, a voltage was supplied directly to the cathode with a separate power supply. C1 is the cathode bypass capacitor. This capacitor allows audio signals to bypass the cathode resistor. This is important because the cathode resistor restricts and fights against the voltage swing of an audio signal. This reduces gain and causes some distortion. The capacitor allows the audio signal to flow freely, thus improving gain and reducing distortion. Sometimes you want the capacitor to increase the gain and sometimes you do not. In the first stage of a preamp circuit, I always want as much gain and as little distortion as possible. This is why I always use a cathode bypass capacitor in the first stage. The value chosen of 25 volts at 25 microfarad is typical of most audio signal preamps. Even the old data sheets for the 12A series of tubes use a similar value. The wrong value and you could develop oscillations and unbalance the circuit. Somewhere between 22 and 28 microfarads is ideal based on the reactance of this circuit. The calculations for reactance are beyond the scope of this video, but if you want to learn about the math involved and the formulas for reactance for capacitors and inductors, let me know in the comments. R4 is the plate resistor. The idea of this is to work as part of a filter network with the coupling capacitor. As a general rule, the higher the value, the higher the gain and the more audio signal pass through the coupling capacitor. C2 is the coupling capacitor. This blocks the DC plate supply from the first stage from reaching the grid of the second stage. This capacitor allows the audio signal to pass from the plate of stage 1 to the grid of stage 2. The higher the value of this capacitor, the more low frequencies will pass. Because I did not want to build a low frequency roll off tone control circuit into this preamp, I used a small 0.02 microfarad capacitor in this position. This small value cuts some of the lows and rumble but allows the highs to pass freely. VR1 is the volume control. This adjusts how much signal reaches the grid of the second stage. This component also acts as a grid leak resistor, referencing the second grid to the ground. R5 is the cathode resistor for the second half of the 12AX7. Notice it does not have a complementary cathode bypass capacitor. This is to reduce the gain of stage 2, as it is always best practice to stagger the gain stages. R6 is the plate resistor for the second plate in the 12AX7. 
C3 is the coupling capacitor for stage 2. Notice it is a much higher value than the first coupling capacitor. I chose this value to allow more bass tones to reach the power amplifier. R7 is the grid leak resistor for the 12AT7. R8 is the cathode resistor for the 12AT7. C4 is the cathode bypass capacitor. It is of a typical value. R9 is to reduce the signal from the output portion for coupling to the line in on my sound card. You could use a potentiometer to have a variable output. A lower value increases the signal strength. Use caution and measure the output before attaching to the line in on any other device. The transformer connects the B plus to the plates of the 12AT7. A transformer only passes alternating current to the secondary windings, so only the amplified audio signal is apparent on the output side of the transformer. The transformer saturates with magnetic flux from carrying DC to the plate, and this adds a little compression to the tone of the power amplifier. The transformer and speaker each have a reactance that varies by frequency. This causes some frequencies to come through stronger and others to come through a little weaker. All these factors come together and affect the flavor, tone, and vibe of the output. R10 and R11 are both parts of the filter circuit. The B plus for the 12AX7 is connected after both resistors to ensure maximum filtering at the earliest stage of the preamp. There is a filter between both B plus supplies to help reduce sympathetic oscillations. C5 and C6 are the filter capacitors for the plate supply. Let's follow the signal path through the schematic. The signal enters through the input jack and passes through the grid stopper. The signal then enters the first grid of the 12AX7. Here it is induced on the plate voltage and passes through the first coupling capacitor. The signal then passes through VR1, the volume control, and enters the second grid of the 12AX7. Here it is induced on the second plate. The signal then passes through the second coupling capacitor. Now the signal meets both grids of the 12AT7. Here the signal is induced on the plates of the 12AT7. The signal passes through the transformer and reaches the output jack. At this point, most of the signal goes to the inductive load, the speaker, and some signal passes to the line out jack. Now let's track the power supply through the schematic. The filaments are not listed on the schematic, so we will trace only the plate supply. The plate supply comes from our SMPS and enters the filter circuit at R10. The DC passes through R10. Any alternating current present passes through C5. The voltage continues on to the output transformer and the second stage of the filter. The transformer carries the high voltage, B+, plus, to the plate of the 12AT7. The second stage of the filter is identical to the first stage of the filter. From the second stage of the filter, the B plus continues to both of the plate resistors for the 12AX7. The B plus then reaches the plates. In the next video in this series, we will examine the parts layout in detail. I will be covering assembly and circuit testing in a future video. To download the schematic and parts layout, please visit www.circuitsecrets.com. The complete parts list is also available at our website. If you have any requests for content you would like to see covered by our videos, please leave a comment and let us know. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.